So everybody, thank you so much again for joining us for today's webinar, the testing gold standard, running the race to win. So again, my name is Bob Cruz. I'm CEO and co-founder of Checkpoint Technologies. I am very excited to be the moderator today. I've been in IT now for about 31 years, actually started off as a COBOL programmer back in the 80s. And then about after nine years of doing that, I developed a real passion for quality assurance and software testing, especially when it comes to test automation. I also do a lot of presenting on risk analysis, building stronger, better agile teams and testing teams. And um, you know, just things all along that line, especially on functional testing and writing effective requirements. So with that said, I'm joined by Clyde. Clyde, go ahead and introduce yourself for the audience, please. Okay. Thanks, Bob, for the introduction. Um, before we get started, I'll share a little bit of information about myself and my background. Then we'll jump right into today's presentation. From a bio perspective, I've been married to my wife, Christine, for 36 years. And I have two adult kids, Alicia and Zach one awesome little granddaughter her name is Scarlett. Um, as you can tell, I'm an avid Ohio State Buckeye sports fan. Love taking vacations, especially cruises. And I love sports car. My favorite is my 1969 Ford Mustang, which has 4,000 original miles and is a one of one. In the IT space, I've worn many hats over the years. I've been a systems analyst, a developer, DM, process engineer, OCM, SAP Solution Manager, Architect, Security Manager, and Test Manager for various organizations. ConAgra Foods is where I really went to the next level in my understanding of how to fully develop enterprise-wide testing principles that I've been able to leverage and expand upon now for 30 plus years across the globe. From a competencies perspective, as shared earlier, I've had over 30 years of IT experience having worked with and or implemented application lifecycle management solutions for more than 200 of the Fortune 500 companies, amongst others. Some of the organizations I've had the privilege to work with include U.S. Stratcom, ExxonMobil, Cargill, Norfolk Southern Railroad, USDA, and the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, to name a few. I've also implemented or supported the implementation of more than 25 centers of excellence, testing centers of excellence, or advanced customer centers of excellence with SAP. My primary core competencies include test management, strategy and roadmap development, change and release management, OCM, security, and a unique skill set with SAP Solution Manager. Great, great. Thanks, Clyde. Appreciate that. So, hey, everybody, just a little bit of housekeeping here. You all should see a control panel or something very similar. You have the ability to toggle back and forth between full screen or window mode. But the main thing I really want to point out is that there should be, you should have a questions panel as well. Clyde and I absolutely love questions. We are going to do our very best to get to each and every question. Uh, we will also do our best to ask the questions as we're going rather than hold them all to the end. If we don't get to all of the questions that are asked, we will be answering the questions in an Excel spreadsheet and sending those out to all attendees. So again, we love questions. And if uh, Clyde or I tell a bad joke, we also love if you just type in a ha ha or an LOL. We always uh, appreciate uh, admission of our bad humor. That's okay. Um, the other thing also I wanna share with everybody that today's session is being recorded and we will be providing the link for the recording of this webinar. And then it will also be providing uh, the slides in PDF format. So with that, Clyde, I'm going to turn it over to you and let you take it away. I may interject every once in a while. Thanks, Clyde. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. Good morning, everybody. Let's jump right in. So for today's agenda, we're going to look at some typical customer challenges and opportunities based on real life situations with the customers we've worked with, the bronze to gold process, risk-based testing importance of alignment, which I'll spend a lot of time on, the evaluation process, automation, and measurement. Some of the challenges with the pace of and quantum of change in data, technology, processes, and organizational structure, there's an increased amount of pressure on teams responsible for testing to go faster. 
to do more with less, to reduce the amount of time and cycles to test, to automate, prioritize testing with a focus on what's most important to the business, and finally, to be more agile. The solution for moving from bronze to gold. In order to address our potential solution options, we need to consider the following. Do we need to test everything? No. How do we reduce the testing effort and cost without impacting quality? When do we stop testing? How can we be successful with more test cycles? How do we get buy-in from the business when we plan to reduce the number of test cases run? What metrics do we produce? The reality is that many organizations struggle with the task to define, build, prioritize, and maintain a robust testing capability that's properly focused on reduction of risk while also enhancing time to market requirements. Moving from bronze to gold will enable organizations to satisfy the increasing demands from your company base, internal and or external, to keep up with the pace of change while constantly improving on the overall quality and timeliness of your products and services. Bronze to Gold focuses on helping organizations move away from the shotgun approach to testing where we test everything and enable a collaboration and team ownership to define and agree on the true gold standard of testing. Hey, Clyde. Before we get started. If I could just, yes, go ahead. Clyde, Mike. if I could just interject for a moment, if you could just speak up a little bit louder, some of our audience members are having a hard time hearing you. Okay, thanks, Bob. So sure. before we get started, um, I'd share a little project manager humor with you. I'll pause just a moment and let you read it. I'm not sure about the background of the author Scott Adams for this comic, but I think we can all agree that the author isn't too far off on what we see in real life with many of our projects. So the three key learning points for today's presentation are setting the context for moving from a bronze to gold testing framework, the process of obtaining gold, and the value proposition for implementing bronze to gold measures for success. Now the next three slides are from an actual customer that I worked with up in Minnesota that we defined the challenges, what the testing center of excellence, what their their actions were going to be and how they were going to recommend those actions to the business to gain buy-in. So in this first example, we see that there was testing was performed by various teams. So there wasn't a single source of testing was done throughout the organization. There was no comprehensive regression test suite available. The TCOE's action for this was higher maturity. And I'm not going to read all the recommendations and value propositions, but I'll highlight a couple here. Define process gain buy-in and acceptance from the teams. If we didn't, if we weren't successful with that first bullet, the rest really didn't matter. The second one was almost equally as important, which was to minimize the impacts to the teams. Again, the teams were already busy. We can't show that we're going to give you more work without showing you the value and actually show that we're going to reduce the work. So again, developing a value-added regression suite of tests to ensure maximum coverage, standardize our tools, et cetera, et cetera, were things that were important for us. The second challenge was difficulty identifying and maintaining critical business processes, the lack of automation, and the lack of test coverage and requirements traceability. The TCOA's response to that was efficient change and release management. The recommendations was focused testing on changed and directly impacted business processes for standard and emergency changes. Again, we didn't want to use the shotgun approach to test everything. We wanted to focus testing on those things that were new and or changed uh, from, a, from, a, from a process perspective. Effective test strategy for daily, weekly, monthly change requests and quarterly change releases. Near zero defect leakage into production, which is a challenge when we're talking about continuous deployment and integration, and then introduction of integrated change and release management solution set of tools. The third uh, item from a challenge perspective was unsynchronized environments and lack of dedicated performance test management. The TCOE's response to this was enhanced agility. The recommendation was to transition 70% or so of their manual testing into automated testing. Environment synchronization, which was one of the keys, actually, because what we wanted to do is take a take all of our non-production systems where we did testing and make them look and feel like production without the sizing. 
efficient use of test management solution, which includes requirements, defect management, reporting, and automation. And finally, performance testing with a holistic view of performance for the system under test. So from a bronze to gold approach, our context, the things we're going to look at is what is risk-based testing, the importance of alignment, establishing our risk criteria, which we'll spend some time on, the evaluation process, doing the test case fix, which is taking our outdated test cases and getting them into a current work state, and then being able to leverage those updated test cases to help us with automation. Our measurements, KPIs, SLAs, and then partnering with somebody who's been there, done that, such as Checkpoint Technologies. So what is risk-based testing? The context. Basically, it's testing done for a project or release based on risks. It uses risk to identify and prioritize appropriate tests during test execution. In simple terms, risk is probability of occurrence of an undesirable outcome or defects. This outcome is also associated with impact. What is risk-based testing to science? And again, I go back to when I was in school. I loved science, and I loved gathering data and creating my hypotheses and and doing my testing and supporting my hypotheses. Uh, and I also like to poke holes in other people's. Um, so science, I love science. So what is risk-based testing from the science? It takes a scientific approach when accounting for risk, primarily focused on business impact and the likelihood of failure. And one of the keys is enablement of an established framework that addresses the concern of the business. That is a must. Risk-based testing goals and objectives must take into consideration, are we testing what matters most? And what I mean by that, in the screen in the top right, we see uh, risk categories that have financial, operations, and strategic. You also see some risk subcategories such as funding, capacity, availability, customer retention, and demand shortfall. And then below that, you have your risk level with some different categories as well. This is something that needs to be uniquely created for each organization, but this is a great framework to start from. Then what is the overall quality of the deliverable? Again, we, are, are, again, we can't test everything, but the quality of what we test and release to production is critical to our business. As an example, we can assume that poor quality will have a direct impact on customer retention. And are we achieving continuous integration and deployment? And are we achieving the business goal of faster time to market? The importance of alignment, and we'll spend some time here. And I like these pictures, and again, you'll see the Ohio State flavor there. But it's just like a kicker and quarterback have completely different skills. Team members have different skills, and they're all necessary parts of a winning team. So the four things that we'll look at are collaboration, ownership, accountability, and action. And from a collaboration, we need to have ensure that we're working with our business and functional teams, development and testing. From an ownership perspective, once we've defined our test, somebody needs to take ownership of those test cases to make sure that when we need new test cases, they're created. When we need to make updates, though, they're updated. And they also need to review the test case execution results and confirm and agree on those results. Accountability. They're accountable for ensuring that new or modified test cases or automated scripts are added and or updated as necessary. And finally, and actually I could have probably put this first, it's action. Because step one is for us to agree upon um, and prioritize our gold test cases and scripts from the highest risk to the lowest risk. So establishing our risk criteria, the process, risk criteria must consider the overall functional impact to our user base when we have a failure. So what percentage of my user base will be impacted with this failure? Financially, what are our SLA penalties, our decrease in revenue or increased costs based off that failure? From a security perspective, are there legal repercussions, regulatory permissions or client policy? From a data integrity, is there data corruption, incorrect or missing data, data availability, data security, or data consistency between my disparate systems. From a performance perspective, what are the number of users impacted based off of my failure? What capabilities are now unavailable? And what 
about my, my system response time. And finally, milestones, internal corporate milestones. And again, we're all accountable to our shareholders. Production milestones, again, the accountability now is to our customers. And then our testing and development milestones, which we're accountable to our leadership. Risk equals impact uh, times probability. These are things that we need to take into consideration when defining our risk. Now, I like this particular screen. This is one that I actually used when I was the customer. Um, I worked with my technical folks to help me understand um, when we were going from bronze to gold, what are the things that are most critical to us? Uh, technical team, I need some help. So what they did is they were able to generate a report that showed me which of their, uh, from a transaction perspective, which are the top 100 that are used? How about our, how about our custom transactions? How about our systems transactions? And then also, which custom transactions aren't we using? Why am I spending time waste, uh, testing that anymore? Which custom reports aren't being uh, tested? Then going to the center, you'll see uh, which custom SAP transactions were used top 100, the VAO2, which is our change sales order transaction or process. It was used over a million times in the course of the month. This is, a, again, a, a, a tool that I could leverage and go back with my functional team and review to say, hey, this is what we're seeing from a, from a usage perspective in the field. These are the things we're seeing that are important. How important are these things, right, uh, from, from that perspective? Then on to the far to the right there, there's also which custom reports were not being used. And again, I left the numbers there in part of the spreadsheet uh, that, would, from, that I exported. But you'll see there's almost 1,400 reports that were not being used over the last year. Somebody developed them, somebody tested them, somebody's maintaining them, um, but we're not using them. And again, this is just one tool for us to leverage and helping us to define our bronze to gold. The evaluation process. Um, and again, we're looking at risk-based testing. The previous slide was technical. Now I'm going to work with my business process SMEs. In the top left, you'll see a, a slide that shows golden process T codes. So we see the process areas. It's material management, it's HR, it's the transactions, it's the transaction name. Uh, describe any variants. And so any of the variations, are there variants associated to this particular process? Um, what's the transaction impact if we have a failure? And then what's the impact description? So again, working with the teams, and this is unique based on different organizations and how we create these. Going further, again, looking at the bottom part of the left screen, you see regression testing, and then kind of moving from left to right, you see test case prioritization. Then moving to the next right, you see coverage-based, requirements-based, risk-based. Again, it's very, very important that I'm not working in a silo. I'm working with my functional team and my technical team to help me understand what's critical to the company, our, our business, uh, to define our, our, our bronze to gold stair, uh, statute. The evaluation process. Again, here is an example in the right center. You'll see in red PA30. PA30 is a transaction that's used across many of our different functions, such as benefits, the enrollment, change birth date, change employee name, all the way down to the bottom of maintain work phone number, and there's many, many more. So taking the arrow uh, in between that down to the bottom, you'll see test case input. I have test one, two, three. I have different variations on how I'm going to execute based on data that particular transaction. From a personal perspective or example, I worked with ConAgra Foods years ago. ConAgra Foods is a large consumer foods company. We created sales orders for literally thousands of customers. The sales order processing was critical to all of our customers, but I can assure you that if we did something that impacted Walmart, the financial impacts were extremely severe meaning we spent a little extra focus on Walmart. Let's just say that we made sure that the Walmart create sales order process didn't have any issues as part of our regression testing. So when we're looking at tasks and, and we're looking to, um, to identify which ones we want to focus on and decompose and things of that nature, we look at the complexity of a test case. So again, using the example of that PA30, I wouldn't expect a single test case to contain all PA30 variations within one test. I also wouldn't expect to see a test case have 100 different steps. That's too complex. We're also looking from a complex, not only the complexity, but the legal and regulatory, the financial impacts, process variance. Can this test be broken into multiples based on the data points and our decision points? 
Um, we also have tests that are country specific or plant specific. We also have tests for roles. We need to understand what roles and, and responsibilities are responsible for executing that test. Number of defects created against that process area. The more defects equals the higher the risk. This is typically a big question mark since meaningful SLAs or KPIs are usually unavailable, so it would have to be provided based off of a manual review of, a bit of available historical data. Doing the test case fix, the process. In this screen, you see, I'm going to go from left to right, um, a test case that has a name. Uh, it's BPC, so that's the process team owner. Uh, the sequence of the test is 002. The name of the test, the requirement that we're going to be satisfying is CI planning augmentations. When I look at the descriptions, the data in there is non-meaningful. When I go further down still, I have no idea who the designer of the test is, what the requirements are, or if there's any variance. Um, there's a lot of data that's missing. Now, we did an extract from Quality Center to get to the design steps. So, again, looking at the design steps, um, I have no idea where I'm starting. I have no idea what roles or authorizations I'm going to use as part of my test. I don't see any data, so I don't know what my data inputs are. And then my expected results, they're so high level that they're not meaningful. So what we were able to do is create a third column there called observations and provide some high level feedback to those particular process teams. Um, and then work with them using a, a standard matrix, again, using now to the far right, the test quality evaluation, where we looked at some uh, test case name, the description, the design, the things that they said that are important that need to be there. Um, and we worked with each of those teams to make sure that their test cases were up to date using those criteria. So on identifying associated prior test cases, the gold, critical gold test cases need to be assigned to a manual tester to own, fix, learn, update, execute, and report on. And then the manual tester would now be responsible for test case removal for those that aren't valid anymore, enhancements based on change, and creation of new te test cases based on new capability. Indicators for new test case development include the following. I have a new requirement, so it's a new capability. Change to existing requirements, so I have an enhancement. Or I can run change impact analysis tools such as Life Compare, Panaya, BPCA, as examples to help me understand where I need to add or update my test cases. And then we'll look at automation. In this screen, um, you see the challenge for this customer. The, the challenge was to automate critical business processes and day-to-day -day scenarios so they could be leveraged across all their projects for all their different types of testing. And then when you look at the challenge and you go to the right there, I'll look at the first two business processes. The first one is MM material life cycle, which manually, for me to test that manually, took one hour. New oil field services, on the other hand, took me two days. What we were able to do is take these critical processes, which we defined as gold, and transition their manual test to automation. Now, coming down to the left, where we see um, that same MM material life cycle uh, test, which took manually one hour to execute, was now four minutes. That new oil field service, which took two days previously, was now 32 minutes. So you can see the value. The value is the return uh, on investment, which was reduced test execution time, earlier defect detection and resolution, 94 hours of manual testing to six hours. And again, I think the thing that's key there, too, is that 94 hours was four or five teams versus that six hours was one person pushing a button, monitoring to make sure that the test executed successfully, gathering the reports, providing those reports to those owners from accountability to the previous slide, and making sure that everybody agreed on, on, on the status. This obviously also improved the confidence and quality with reusable and repeatable automated test scripts. So the value, change management tool selection are critical steps to test automation. When we try to figure out and understand what should we be looking at, who should we be looking at, we look at Gartner and Forrester as an example. When you look at Gartner and Forrester, the number one tool for automation in the industry today is Tricentis Tosca, which is a scriptless-based tool. The number one used tool in the market is MicroFocus Unified Functional Test. Now, if you're on an SAP platform, and again, that's one of my specialties, and you want to inject some test automation for your SAP process, you have a free automation solution known as CBTA. 
For those new to automation, here's some of our recommendations. Implement a test automation framework. Select smaller test cases which will help you in maintenance and reuse. Work with your functional teams and your business units. Demonstrate some quick wins and have them be your champions for the rest of the organization. Again, when I was the customer with ConAgra Foods, I selected four different teams to work with in implementing an automation strategy. Once, of the, once the rest of the organization saw the value, my challenge was getting additional funding. Everyone was knocking on my door wanting to go next. Communicate successes and value provided back to the business. For those more experienced with automation, you can implement a more robust test automation framework. Create reusable components, identify repetitive tasks, identify time-consuming tasks, and automate them. Measurements, KPIs and SLA metrics. Define what's important. While everything is important, we all know there are some things that are a little more important than others. And again, I worked with a customer up in Minnesota that I worked to help with their uh, their KPIs. And then top left there, you'll see things that were important to them were requirements and defects. Requirements traceability, the percentage of rework. Defects escapes by component, defects by severity, et cetera. These are all things that were important to them. And again, each customer is unique. Detail a plan to get there. And again, leveraging another Minnesota-based customer that I worked with, uh, on the bottom left, we created KPI selection criteria. And going around in that wheel, we see focused, actionable, measurable, understandable, differentiated, and relevant. And one of the things I liked about relevant, it's linked to strategic objectives and critical success factors. Hey, Clyde. Measure uh, if I could interject yeah. for just a moment. We've got a great question from the audience. Uh, okay. It's an excellent question. So what are some suggestions in regard to implementing the process in an enterprise level organization? So again, I'll go back to my personal uh, experience when I was with ConAgra. Um, initially when I had started doing this, we were actually the North America's largest implementation for SAP at the time. So our primary focus was on that particular uh, process or that area was, which is SAP. But my CIO said, hey, Clyde, we need to look at this more from an enterprise perspective. And, the, and how we named things, what we did, um, were different. Some of the tools that we used were different. So what I needed to do um, was work between those two organizations, our SAP and our non-SAP, so that was the rest of the enterprise, agree to our tools, agree to our processes, agree to our deliverables, so our requirements, our functional specs, tech specs, design specs, all those different things, it was more than just testing, but we had to agree to all the different artifacts, all the different deliverables, and then come together as a group. And again, what I ended up doing was a lot of dog and pony shows. I had to, once I, I, I pulled all the information, I, I gathered all the information from the meetings, I summarized all of my findings and my recommendations, and then I had to go back out and sell those to those different organizations. And again, because those organizations who weren't SAP, as an example, they didn't really care what the SAP side was doing and vice versa. So there's a lot of, you know, give and take, and, and, and there's a lot of selling. So I had to be a salesperson uh, way back when, when I was not a salesperson. I was more technical. So great question. Bob, can you add anything else to that? Well, no, you know, it, it's funny. So I have found the exact same thing with so many organizations. One of the things they tend to fail, that they fail to do a lot of times is define success. If you don't, if you don't define success and the criteria which needs to be met to be considered successful, then how will you know when you've failed or when you've succeeded or when you're somewhere in the middle? So you make some excellent points and I, I agree 100%. I found those uh, the, the processes you outlined there to work exceptionally well. Yeah, I think the other thing that's key here where I've got to me measure and adjust, right? So processes change, technologies change, leadership changes we need to be able to adjust our metrics the things that are important based off change and then the final thing is com communicate both our successes and our failures we fix those things that we're not doing as well as we want to do and we make sure that we have an improvement plan 
And again, I think the thing that's key here uh, for me, because I'm a big process person, is if I can demonstrate the successes, and again, I don't want to have process for the sake of process. It's got to be meaningful process. So even on that bottom left there where we did the KPI selection criteria, it took us a long time to come up with what those different wheels were or spindles were around that wheel. But once we defined those, then we, we worked in, we broke up into teams to define what each of those different things were. And then we had to agree on those and then go out to the rest of the organization and sell it, sell and tell. So communication is really, really important in being flexible and knowing that you need to adjust because of technology and people and leadership and whatnot. Very, very key into this area. Great question. So again, the bronze to gold summary and value benefits. There's seven key learning points that I want to uh, review. It's the importance of alignment. And again, I can't do it by myself. I can't do it in a silo. Um, testing, unfortunately, in a lot of organizations, it's just not highly respected. It's at the end of the food chain. So if I can bring along the rest of the organization with me, my BAs, my development team, I'm working with basis and security, the, those different areas, I'm going to be much more successful. Establishing your risk criteria, and again, risk is different by organization, but I think in the slide that we looked at earlier, um, those are some pretty good things that you can leverage to get started from a risk perspective. Evaluation, uh, the evaluation process, and again, it's evaluating what's important to the organization and coming up with your criteria of moving away from the shotgun approach to more of a laser-focused approach with our testing. And once we define those things that are critical to the business, um, and again, we want to be able to reduce the time, but we also want to be able to do continuous uh, integration, continuous deployment, we need to fix those test cases that we say that are important to us, make sure they're, they're something that I can run and execute with. Um, I can leverage that whether I'm doing training, I'm doing onboarding. There's many different things that I can do with those test cases if they're up to date. But then once I get them up to date, I want to take those and transition to automation. Uh, one of the biggest values, as we've seen in the previous slide, was we're able to go from doing something that's 94 plus hours for a release to six hours where I have four or five people who are doing manual repetitive testing to one person pushing a button and providing the results back. So again, those teams now are focused more on innovative activities versus redundant repetitive manual testing. And then measure yourself. And again, if you're not measuring yourself, uh, you don't know if you're getting better or worse. And again, I want to celebrate my successes, but I also want to know what I'm not doing well and put action plans in place to resolve those things so that I can get better. And then finally, don't do it alone. Um, this is something that many organizations try to do alone and they fail. Um, you have the wrong people trying to, to do things and not collaborative. Uh, it's not being pushed or it's being pulled. So don't do it alone. Do it with somebody who's been there, done that, such as Checkpoint Technologies. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Bob um, for questions and answers. Bob? Hey, Clyde. Yeah, you bet. So we've got a few, and I'd like to thank everybody for submitting the questions, and we will do our best to answer questions, uh, time permitting, uh, but it looks like we've got about five minutes or so. Um, so, Clyde, uh, one of the questions is, how do you go about getting buy-in from the business and development team? And, you know, you could even add, so I, I love the addition of business in that question because you're talking about, you know, the stakeholders there. So how do you go about Correct. getting buy-in? So, again, if you go back to one of those earlier slides where I talked about the challenges and the TCOE's, uh, TCOE's uh, response to that, uh, the what we end up doing is we did a lot of dog and pony shows. So again, if we are going to be making recommendations, uh, and, and again, this, this, trans, this goes across not just testing, this goes across everything. If I'm going to be asking people to do something, they need to know that there's something in it for them. They need to know that, uh, again, that I'm not asking them to do a bunch of rework. So one of the things that we did, and again, this was a great thing that we did up in Minnesota, um, we were able to define what it is that we wanted to do what the value proposition was, and then we went to each of those different business units, and it wasn't just the business units, it was IT, so it was my database folks, it was my security po folks, it was those people responsible for master data. We went and we talked to all those different teams, shared what we wanted to do, we asked them to poke holes in what we were suggesting, and if it didn't make sense, the things that we were suggesting, we needed to be okay with pulling those things out. So collaboration was really, really important for us, gain buy-in, 
and then go out and, and, and execute. And if we didn't execute again, that was a, that was a separate story as well. But we were able to execute. Great question. Great, great. And here's uh, here's another one from the audience. Uh, Clyde, do you have a method, and and I'd like to uh, address this after you've answered it, but do you have a method to convert requirements to test cases? Requirements to test cases, um, that I, I do. And, and again, this uh, this could go down a, a different rabbit hole, Bob, so I'm going to try to stay high level a little bit. Um, so when I look at requirements, requirements, is that that's a broad term, right? I've got uh, business requirements. Business requirements are higher level. They're being provided from the business to IT to translate into system or IT requirements. It's something that's actionable. Um, what do those requirements look like? So again, for me, I would I'd love to spend more time on this question because to me, what does your requirements look like? Um, are they actionable? Are they measurable? Are they specific? Are they detailed? Do they account for all the different variations of the things that you're asking for? I'm not asking them to, to solution, but I'm asking them to give me enough details so that I understand what you're asking me for. Does it include security or data requirements? And again, it's really working with the business, helping the business understand what I need to be successful from an IT perspective from requirements. Then once I'm able to translate that business requirement to an IT requirement, I can now work with those people who are developing those from testing and decompose those into test cases that where I can do my traceability. So again, I could I could go on and on and on. This is a that's a major topic. That's actually one of the biggest uh, gaps I would think in most organizations is poor requirements. Business doesn't know how to correctly define them. IT doesn't know how to pull them out of the business. If that yeah. makes sense. So so, and what I would add to that is, you know, in addition to, it depends on how you're writing the requirements, it truly depends also on what solution you're using to gather and develop your requirements. Um, so there are different solutions out there where uh, you'll more or less convert your requirements into test cases through uh, I'll, I'll use the phased approach where you might take your requirement to a user story or a use case and then from there to a test case because uh, it, during that phase you're going to be added you're going to be adding the different steps and things like that um, you know and and we've got one of our engineers who's um, who's also uh, adding in you know one of the things he shared is it you know you want your developers and and also your testers to be able to map those requirements back to the different story. So a lot of it, it just, it truly depends on that because when you look at just a pure straight requirement, um, you know, that is typically what it is you're gonna validate, the, the functionality, the criteria, the condition, which you expect to exist when a certain action is performed or when a certain state exists. So uh, it really does depend on the different solutions you might be utilizing. And, and I think it also, Bob, uh, oh, yeah. go ahead, I'm sorry. Oh, I was actually gonna go to another question. So go right ahead, Clyde. Uh, yeah, so the, the other thing I think that's kind of important too, it's, it's what are you running from a methodology perspective? Are you agile? Are you working in small groups where you're doing multiple releases more frequently? Are you more waterfall? And again, um, from a requirements perspective, if I'm more agile, my documentation may be lagging a little bit. If I'm more waterfall, it's and you know we go from requirements to design, build, and test, et cetera, et cetera. So methodology will also play a big part in in that question as well. Yep. And then um, you know, I, I I'm actually a, a board member on the Tampa Bay Quality Assurance Association. Um, and I also see, by the way, we have a few folks from the Software Quality Group of New England. So uh, a big shout out to them. But one of the things that I saw a presentation at the Tampa Bay Quality Assurance Association not too long ago in regard to Gherkin and, and solutions specifically for Gherkin and, and converting, uh, you know, utilizing a BDD process. Um, so great question. Thank you very much for that. Uh, another, I think this is going to be a quick question for you, Clyde. What type of test type or test types were turned into gold? So were you focused on functional and or security, integration, user acceptance testing? Uh, what were the test types, Clyde? 
Well, that's that's a great question. Uh, again, that that's going to vary by organization, but typically we always start out with from uh, integration and regression, right? So uh, again, when I have changes being made to production, um, those are the things that are most important to me because of my my risk criteria, right? So we worked on identifying those things that were most critical to the business for when we did our integration and regression. Um, but again, we were able, that's, that's your starting point, but then we were able to step backwards. And again, testing, we can talk, what are the different testing types? There's white box, black box, smoke testing. Let's define what testing is. Let's, let's define where those testing types take place. Unit, functional unit and development, string testing in my test environment. I've got a pre-prod environment. Again, depends on my environment and the types of testing, but typically we're going to start with our integration and our regression testing. Then we can kind of work backwards as well because one of the goals, again, is to, to shorten the amount of time that we're doing testing, add more value back to the, to the business, but also focus on those things that are most important to us, and then maintain, right? So we also have test sets that we are going to run whenever we promote anything to production, but those test sets are, are separate from those golden in, in a lot of instances as well. Yep. Absolutely. Great. So I, that is all the time we have for questions. So Clyde, if you wouldn't mind going through the next uh, slide and we're going to wrap things up, but everybody, if we didn't answer your question, we will get them answered and we're going to actually email all of the questions with all of the answers to everybody who has joined us today. So just real quick about Checkpoint Technologies. We've been around since January 2003. Our primary area of expertise is in quality assurance and quality control or software testing, whether it's functional performance, application security. And you know what? We have expertise in DevOps, Agile, Waterfall. We are very proud partners with Microfocus, Tricentis, Cobiton, and Mobile Labs. And we have a lot of expertise in the Atlassian solutions as well. Um, and we've got expertise also in SAP, especially when it comes to testing those. And we have a very proud uh, affiliation partnership with the Quality Assurance Institute worldwide. So that just gives you a quick rundown on us. And these are the different services we provide. Uh, we have a dedicated staff org. So whether you need a permanent resource or long-term, short-term, offshore, nearshore, and outsourcing, we also provide consulting. So one of the things Clyde and I and some of our other engineers do is we will go in and assess your total QA and software testing processes, or we can make it laser focused. So if you want us to look at the skill set of your team, if you want us to look at your automation processes, whether you're getting the most out of that. So we also do a lot of consulting. Uh, as I mentioned, we do outsourcing. Uh, U.S. based as well as near shore. We do a lot of education, so with classroom training as well as mentoring on specific solutions where we help get real work done and we train you on specific solutions. And that's also the mentoring. So again, thank you so much. And Clyde, if you'll go to the next few slides. So these are some upcoming webinars that we've got. We're very excited about. And actually just today, this mobile testing in an agile DevOps world, that's gonna be rescheduled to July 14th, everybody. So that date's wrong, literally happened just before. And, but then we've got another excellent webinar coming up, which I'm very excited about. We're Sohail Huck, one of our senior engineers is going to be providing a webinar quality as a team sport. So I think we'll learn how, how rough that sport is. I know we can all relate to that. And Clyde, if you'll go to, so everybody, thank you so much for joining us. Here's our contact information. We would love any comments that you have. And again, while this is up, feel free to ask other questions. Clyde, you wanna wrap it up and say thanks? Okay. Well, again, appreciate the opportunity to share this with you. Hopefully, it didn't come across uh, too salesy. The intent today, again, was to educate and hopefully share some lessons learned from customers that we've worked with uh, throughout our years. Um, again, thank you and look forward to any questions you might have. All right, Grace. Stay safe and stay well, everybody.
and be on the lookout for the questions because there's going to be some great information there. Take care now. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye.